let's really work hard at trying not to become too attached to the inventory that we're buying to try to make our living with. What's up everybody? So welcome back to Bama J Bird Riso. Welcome back to the channel. So good to have you with me today. I'm Josh as always. I'm just really excited about what's going on in the eBay world for me right now and on YouTube. And I'm thankful for all of you who are going with me on this journey. So today, two really cool topics. First of all, we're going to be looking at what sold. I say cool topic, maybe that one's just run of the mill, but also I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a teaser on a video that I'm working on. Hopefully we'll have out in just a few days. I have made a really huge buyout. I mentioned this a while back. It was a, a younger dude, about I guess a little younger than me, whose father had passed away and had a ginormous, just a huge music collection. And I had the opportunity to buy that out. Now it's CDs. And ordinarily, a lot of times, this would not be a good uh, purchase. But in this case, guys, it's going to be epic. So I got a little teaser of that. And we may talk a little bit about uh, reselling as well, maybe a little bit about the importance of not holding on to inventory. It's hard not to become a collector. I was talking with a friend who is local here just a couple hours. She lives actually where uh, my uh, wife is from, a couple hours south of here. And she was asking about some things that she had picked up in an estate sale. And we were just kind of talking about this, this tendency we have as resellers to get attached to the things we buy sometimes and want to hold on to them and how important it is uh, to avoid that. So we'll talk about that a little bit. First of all, let's dive right on into what sold and see uh, what's going out the door today. We have 12 sales for $459.36. So a pretty good average sale price. I would say it's a little shy of, of $40 per sale, but that's not too bad. I'll take that. It's a lot of clothes again. I'll go ahead and warn you. I have some cool vintage items within the clothes, two or three of those. And also, I do have a few hard goods, a really cool vintage video game. So I have some things I think will interest you. But let's dive right in. First, All right, so first item going out the door today, I have a G.I. Joe part. This goes to the ERA 1984 Cobra asp vehicle this is a gun barrel and so it's not very large as you can see compared to my hand but this goes on a little vehicle for gi joe's and i parted this out because the vehicle itself was in really bad shape and i'm still selling off of that little gi joe buy i had back several months ago all these extra spare parts uh, and this brought six dollars and fifty cents six dollars and fifty cents plus shipping and again I'm already free and clear on this. So even though it's a small dollar sale, it is all profit. Next item. So this is a copy of Duke Nukem. And this is the 3D edition, Atomic edition. This is for PC. And just a really awesome game. It's a super, super clean condition. This actually comes out of that same buy of music CDs that I've been selling out of. And uh, this sold for $9.97 plus shipping. Really cool game there. All right, next up, I have Epic Mickey for Wii, part one and two. Epic Mickey, again, part one and two. I lotted these together, and I got $10.94 plus shipping on these. I sent out an offer, and they accepted. I think I had these at about like $14.99. They're not really valuable, but... Uh, that's not a bad sale. I'll take it. I didn't have much in these at all. I think about a buck a piece. So good sale there. All right, next item. So this is the kind of stuff that you, you see. It's blue back here. There's two shirts in here. These are both uh, Ann Taylor Loft. And I, it's not a brand I really pick up, but these were given to us and they were a size that we couldn't use. One is new with the tags and the other one just had the tag pulled. I don't think it's been worn. And I listed these, I forget now, maybe like $14.99, but I took an offer of $12.50 or either sent an offer. I can't remember which way it was now, but $12.50 plus shipping on something that we were given for free. So you can't really tell much about these, but it's just a basic blouse uh, for women's short sleeve. Again, I got $12.50 plus shipping on those two shirts. Now, next I have a Deadpool puzzle. Uh, if you've been watching the videos lately, this is, I think, the third one I've sold recently. Some of these, I've had these a long time. I bought a bunch of puzzles uh, kind of during, it's probably when they were starting to lose popularity. 
when all the shutdown was coming to an end and I had really started buying and trying to, you know, begin an eBay store, puzzles had been really big and were selling for good money because people weren't able to go to the store and it gave them something to do at home during their free time. And uh, so, you know, the, the sold comps looked really good. And so I bought a bunch of them that were new at Salvation Army and some other places, some at the Goodwill. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I got stuck with a lot of them. But uh, you'd only have two or three dollars in each one and they are slowly selling over time. This one sold for $10 plus shipping and it was on priority ship. So the shipping was like 12 or $14. So I'll probably end up getting about 14 or $15 out of this for the $3 investment. Not bad, worth holding on to. And again, I have sold three of these in the last couple of weeks. That was $9 invested. And I probably averaged about $14 to $15 on each one. So nine to about 45, can't really beat that. All right. so. So unfortunately, as I normally do, I start with the lowest value sale and work my way up and all of my hard goods were in those first few items. So the rest of this is gonna be clothing. I'm sorry if that bores you, uh, but let me hit a couple more items and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of the topics. So uh, next item on the list would be, now don't laugh at me for this, but you know, Victoria's Secret sale as well. This is a set of three sports bras. They're all different colors. I think there's one that's black and then two that have a printed pattern. One's kind of like a blue print. Can't really see it real well. And then one's got that pink and black. Anyhow, uh, these came out of, it's my local, one of my local thrift stores where the clothing's pretty cheap, just out of a bin. I think these, they wound up charging me a dollar a piece for these. So it's like three bucks. And I listed these together because they were all the same size and they were mediums. They're racerback style uh, sports bras. I got $20.99 for these. So a $3 investment into $20.99, not bad, I'll take it. Uh, I, look, I, I, again, I don't know why I feel, I feel like I gotta say this every time, but look, I don't really like selling clothes, but I have to sell what I can find and I would love to find other stuff. And I'm really hoping that this summer, when I have all of my Fridays open instead of being on the job, that I will really be able, I say summer, the spring, the summer, and the fall, that I'll really be able to buy a lot more hard goods at yard sales and garage sales, and even get out to some estate sales and start shifting my, my inventory. I probably will never stop selling clothes because I've learned so much about them. It's gonna be hard to pass up good money makers in the clothing category for me, but I do want to diversify more. I would like to see my store be more at least 50-50 between clothing items and hard goods. And right now, it's pro I don't know what the percentage is, but it's probably like 75, 25 or something like that. So I wanna see that change and it's going to, it's already starting to shift that direction. I mentioned that big CD buy, that's gonna make a big difference because that's like 1500 items or more. So um, anyway, that being said, let's talk about one of our topics just a little bit and that would be not to hold on to inventory when the purpose of buying it is to make money. Now, look, this is easier said than done. If you are a collector of anything, and I can testify to this because in my lifetime, I have been the collector of so many different things. It gets hard sometimes uh, to turn loose of certain items. And then you have sometimes these childhood connections and these this nostalgic feeling, you know, when you buy certain things, especially vintage items, that sometimes makes you want to kind of hold on to them for a while. You know, there, there's certain things. Some people love Christmas items. Some people love plushes. Some people love Hot Wheels, you know, like, like Rocky Top Picker, you know, Ben. Um, everybody's got these these little areas, these little niches that they're drawn to, and, and it makes them want to hold on. But, but I'll say this, you know, if you're choosing to do eBay as a business, and, and there's different ways to approach eBay. I, at one time, I thought I was going to only be doing this as a hobby, and I, you know, I love music, and I thought, you know, well, you know, I, once I get rolling on it and I'm making money, that'll be my source of funds to buy more guitars or, you know, whatever other musical instrument I might want, and uh, but especially guitars. But anyway, uh, you know, now I'm in a different place. You know, I, it's not just to support a hobby, and you know, eBay now for me is a means by which I help support my household, and it is much more important that I not become attached to the inventory that I'm buying. Um, a lot of times it's some of the very best things you'll find, you know, that's got the best sell through, that's, that they're hardest to find. And those seem to be the things that we wanna just like, ah, I just don't wanna get rid of it. I've mentioned this before in a previous video about the Nintendo 64s, which by the way, are still in the box, still not listed, 
because I struggle with this too. We all do. But guys, let me encourage you. Let's, let's really work hard at trying not to become too attached to the inventory that we're buying to try to make our living with. Uh, we've got to get that stuff listed and we've got to be more uh, diligent, I think, about trying to not have those types of attachments. Um, it's hard to make money. And this is the thing I've been telling myself. I've been thinking a lot about this because sometimes I get this feeling that, well, if I sell this, I'll never see it again, you know? And I mean, maybe that'll be the case. I don't know. I mean, I can't promise uh, myself or guarantee that I will run into all of these things again. But for the most part, a lot of this stuff, there will probably be another day down the road where I have another chance to buy this or I will at least see it. And, uh, you know, that being the case, I don't have time to mess with this stuff. It's like this music collection I'm about to kind of give you a little teaser on. There's so many cool items in that. I mean, things that I would love to just sit down, put the, uh, the CDs in and just listen, listen, listen and soak up all that cool music. Uh, things I've never heard, but bands that I'm familiar with, but all these deep cuts and just really take it in and enjoy it. But at the end of the day, it's more important for me to make the money. So I've let it sit around for a while. I've had it probably two months and I've just let it sit uh, for different reasons. Sometimes being busy, sometimes just dreading because of so many items, but also because after I started going through it, man, it was so cool. I was just struggling. I was struggling not to hold on to it and not all of it, but just hold on to it long enough to maybe use some of it and listen to some of it. But I decided, you know, it's time that I start detaching from it and I got to get it listed. There's so much money sitting there. It's amazing the value in that buy. So moving on to our next sale. This next item on the list, of course, again, this is all closed, finishing up. This is just a polo Ralph Lauren button up and it is a 15 and a half. It's a really long sleeve, 34, 35 sleeve length, but just a plain white, like suit style shirt or shirt for a tie, you know, it's got the button down collar, really nice, it's got the multicolored uh, horse on it, those are always really good, and I should have had, I think this was a $2.50 shirt, and it sold for $18.68 on an offer. Next, I have a pair of women's, women's buckle jeans, actually these are capris, but these are the women's Peyton, they're a size 34, guys, I know you can't tell much about these, but pretty much everyone's familiar with the Buckle brand or BKE. You can see the designation maybe in the camera. I might have to put a thumbnail of these up. But anyway, best I could do with that. When they're already in the plastic, the light reflecting off of it just makes it really hard to see them. But anyhow, um, $17.59 plus shipping on those. And that's a pretty good profit. Again, I'm pretty sure I got those at the same bin, which would be about $250 or $275. They're a little finicky about prices. Most of the time, everything's $250. I've noticed recently that their sign says $275, but it seems like they're still charging $250. But they also leave it to where they say if they want to charge more, they can. Ordinarily, because I buy so much, they, they tell me all the time I'm one of their best customers. And I feel like they probably don't even charge me for all the items I get because I buy so much at a time. So I, I get really good deals there. I, I know I'm not paying over $250 an item 99% of the time. All right, next on the list, I have a set of three, three pair of Nike running shorts. These are Nike dry fit running shorts. They've got the liners, so they're like the genuine running shorts. It's the kind that, you know, you'd think they were swimming trunks, but it really is like a, a, a lining underwear style lining. Uh, my son ran cross country uh, for several years and I coached cross country when I was teaching. And, uh, that was the style shorts that you buy for cross country runners. So we'd have in our uniforms and, and so the dudes wouldn't be, you know, I mean, I guess they could wear their drawers, but you know, it's kind of cumbersome. It's probably not the kind of dog you want to hear right now, but I'm just telling you like, that's the way it was. And so, uh, these, these are genuine, are actual running shorts, not just shorts you can run in. Anyway, that's way too much information about those shorts, but I got these for $3 a pair. And actually I say $3, they're $1.50. The place that I got them at that are closed are three dollars each for all clothing items, but these were on a, a buy one get one day, so everything was basically half price. So I gave a dollar fifty each. That means I have four dollars and fifty cents in the three pair, and I sold them for thirty four dollars plus shipping. So four fifty into thirty four plus shipping. Really good sell there. Next item, I have a pair of seven for all mankind jeans. Man, these are hard to see too. I'll probably just pull up a thumbnail trying to show you, but there's not much to show, all right? So seven for all mankind, and these are a really good brand to look out for. They're not quite as fast a seller 
as as some of like say rock revival or maybe like uh miss me I, sometimes to me they don't sell quite as fast but these haven't been listed a terribly long time again i've got i'm i'm pretty sure these came from the same uh place there in the local this town nearby us uh where it's out of the bin and so they would have been like 250 these sold for 37.99 plus shipping so really good sale there again 250 into 37.99 all right, this next item is kind of seasonal, I think. Uh, it is a, this is one, I told you I have some vintage clothing items. And so these last two are vintage. And by virtue of that fact, they're also my biggest sales, my, my highest dollar sales. This is, as you can tell, Polo Ralph Lauren. I think you can see it maybe in the tag there, but it's also made in USA, okay? I don't know if you can tell that or not, and it's a size 10. This is a women's blazer. It's a really, really cool color. It's like a, a like a plaid pastel pinks with blues and yellows and uh, different colors in it. So this is very much seasonal considering that we're coming up on Easter. And I've had this listed in my store now for a while. I think I had it listed close to $100, maybe like $75 or something like that. I've slowly dropped the price. But I got a decent offer the other day. I got an offer, I say the other day, I think it was yesterday it sold. This is just sales from the last two days. And uh, this particular item, they offered me 50 bucks for it. And I kind of weighed, you know, the idea of sending back a counter offer. But as long as it had been in the store and, you know, also I only gave $2 for it. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think it was $2. That was a yard sale again. All their clothing items that we were buying that day, they said $2 each. And it's like once we got up there, we had so many items because they had a ton of vintage stuff. They'd quit counting and they just kind of charged us a round amount. And I'm pretty sure we wound up probably with like a dollar or a dollar fifty or less in each item. But anyway, that's beside the point. This jacket sold for $50 plus shipping, and I'm sure that I had no more than $2 in it. The last item going out the door today, this one was really, really cool. I had to put some thumbnails up with some of these so you can see them. I know the clothing items, some of them I could care less about. You know, it's not that big a deal. But I'll try to show you the good brands in case you're not familiar with those. And then I will show you these really cool items. This is a Nike. If you see this, made in USA. You can't tell a lot about it, but you can see the colors, okay? This is a football jersey, and this is a vintage, made in USA, Oregon Ducks football jersey. Now, why in the world I found a vintage, made in USA, Nike, Oregon Ducks football jersey in an Alabama thrift store, I don't know. Uh, this actually came from America's thrift store, and that's the one where uh, they usually price things up, but this, believe it or not, was like $7.99 or $6.99. It was kind of in that range. I know it was under 10 bucks. Really good price on it. I brought it home at first. I thought it might have been an older version of maybe a Notre Dame jersey, but the more I looked at it, I saw the, like the it's got like the embossing on the shoulders for the feathers, and I realized, hey, this is, this is Oregon. And so I thought maybe Notre Dame would be more valuable, but actually I think this was more valuable being Oregon. Uh, of course, uh, for those of you that don't know, one of the biggest boosters or donors to Oregon is the founder of Nike. And, and so that's a, a, a really cool connection there. This jersey, I had it priced at, I think it was 125, maybe it was. And I'd sent out an offer of a hundred bucks. You know, I priced it up high on purpose. Sometimes when I got a really good item, I tried to get rid of the tire kickers. So anyhow, priced it up high, I got an offer back at 90 bucks. And so it was over a $10, we will, I thought, you know, I have a few dollars in this. I'm not going to risk losing it over $10. So I took the offer, $90. That's about $7.99, $6.99, somewhere in that range, into $90 bucks plus shipping. I know some of you are probably thinking, man, you should probably keep up with how much you spend on each item better. And look, I've got some friends like Chris over at Easy Pickens, man. He's got his categorized and his skew. He knows exactly what he spends on every single item. He's so organized. And I'm not necessarily disorganized, but the approach that I have taken from the beginning when I opened up my separate business account was cash in, cash out. And so I just never took time to to list every single item. Uh, Caleb over at Old Pass, he's got a spreadsheet where he does his. And you know, sometimes I wish that I had that just for my own, you know, just for going back and crunching the numbers. And I may shift to that eventually, but for right now, I've just stuck with this total cash in, total cash out. And so I got a good idea usually about what I have in each item because I know what I'm willing to pay. Um, there's items, most of the time I remember really well what I spend, but I just know what the stores charge where I go to. And so most of them have a flat rate, a flat charge, or they stay under a certain amount and it makes it easy for me. Most things at our Goodwills are just priced, all pants this price, all button downs this price, long sleeve, short sleeve, they all have a price. 
And unless they change their, their board where it has the price listed, I don't have to worry about remembering you know, what I paid as long as I know where it came from. And in most of this, that's not a problem. Um, I'm pretty good at keeping up. Now my inventory is getting larger and it's getting harder. So I, I may move more into the other or I may start just doing a general, when I bring the haul home, if I got like 30 items and I spend, you know, $65, I may be like, okay, you know, I've got two something. I, and I, I guess I could do the math right quick, but I really don't care about doing the math right now. Um, but you get my point, you know, where I do, okay, the average cost per item in that lot was this. And then I know how much I've got to price that on average in order to get the profit. But I just don't pick things up I can't make a profit on. That's the goal. Be careful about buying things you cannot make a profit on. All right. So we talked a little bit about not holding on to inventory too long. And I told you I would give you a quick tease of what's coming up. So let's take a look real quick. So guys, this, this buy of CDs that I made. <laughs> All right, so I've got a lot of clips I'm gonna be weaving together to kind of put this story together for you. But I've, I've got like, see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12 boxes total of, of items that, that I bought kind of in bulk from this man uh, who was selling out his dad's CD collection. And I have only started going through two boxes and really one box, they had mixed together. So DVDs, they had a lot of music DVDs and then box sets. And so in those two boxes, I've just kind of sorted out all the DVDs into one box and all the box sets into one box. And I paid, just so you know, $425 for this entire collection. Well, I started going through just the box sets and I'll show you, ignore my mess, please. All right, so these right here, and that's my tea cup, but in my coffee cup, I've had both. <laughs> I don't know what y'all do. I drink a lot of caffeine in case it don't show. So all these right here are still to be looked up and listed. So I think that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I've got 14 box sets yet to list. So far, okay, so far I have listed these, okay? And I know the light's not good, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I've listed 21. In these 21 that I have listed, and you can take a look here, I brought all this in to this separate room to start going through and sorting through all this. Now, guys, there's tons of music and a bunch of it's still new and sealed. Several of these box sets were new and sealed. A lot of these CDs, this whole box right here, nearly the entire box is new sealed. And Let's see, I've also got over here, you just again ignore my mess, but over here I've got a whole bunch, like probably 25 or 30 DVDs. So here's the moral of the story. I've only listed that one stack, just that one part. Spent $425 on all of this. That one stack I have listed is just a little shy of $1,000 worth of listings. I spent $425 thousand dollars worth of listings i still got about a third of the box sets to go through and list uh, some of those i haven't even looked up yet um, I, I don't know what the total value is going to be but i am definitely going to be filming this as i go i'm going to have to do it in pieces uh, and i'm going to just splice it all together hopefully i'll have the mo most of this listed or i so maybe not the most of it listed hopefully i will have most of this sorted and a good bit of it listed within the next week and I'll have enough that I'll go ahead and put out a video. I may put a second video out later as I list more and as I get a better idea for what the total listed value is. This is almost a once in a lifetime type buyout the way it's looking. Uh, I, and in case you're wondering why it's so valuable, guys, the, the names on these, these like these box sets, it's like Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Nuggets, uh, The Birds. You've got uh, a Charlie Daniels one, Buffalo Springfield, The Zombies, Cream, Beach Boys, Paul McCartney, a CCR, Deep Purple, The Turtles, Rick Nelson, Journey, Another Birds. Uh, you've got a couple of Beatles, uh, and, and it just goes on and on. Over here in this set that's not listed, I've got the Bee Gees, I've got Seven Years and the Everly Brothers, Elvis Presley, The Kinks, uh, more Beatles. Man, it's just, just so much. Kansas and I'm trying to remember some of these, some of them I can't remember. Uh, Jeff Beck or Beckology as that said is called just tons and tons and tons of really cool titles and really awesome stuff that's in that collection 
I, I can't wait, guys. I'm excited about going through the rest of it. I would love to have time to listen to all of it. There's a lot of awesome music. And the titles that are in the boxes, it's the same way. Look, it just blows my mind. I, I told my wife this morning, I called her after just listing that first chunk there that I showed you. And I was like, I was like, babe, listen, <laughs> you're not going to believe this. Now, I spent $425. This stuff has been setting. I had looked up a few items. I knew I had some great stuff. Uh, but I, I told her, I said, I'm nearly at $1,000 worth of listings on a $425 investment. I am just absolutely amazed. And I can't wait. I've already had some offers. I, I didn't take it. I counter offer because I felt like it's too low. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, I just got this stuff up. It's not even been up for 24 hours. And I'm starting to get watches and I'm starting to get offers. So that means, usually to me, that means it's gonna sell, some of it's gonna move fast. Uh, I would expect to have my money back probably within a couple of weeks and be into pure profit from then on. And this is gonna be a while, getting all this sold. All right, so there you have it. I'm sorry if this video ran a little bit long. I was trying my best not to, uh, but guys, it's just exciting stuff. Uh, of course, some of you maybe have seen the video about my building that I had put up. I'm, I'm stoked about that. We've got the Highway 127 Picking the Plateau meetup that's coming up with the Two Old Guys Reselling Podcast as host and the Reseller Locker Room Podcast as our co-host. Uh, we're excited about that as well. Down in the description, you'll see links for uh, Eventbrite where you can buy tickets. Go ahead and get those now if you haven't already. I'm probably scattered, smothered, and covered. I feel like I'm like Waffle House on this video. I'm kind of going all over the place. There's so much in my head. I maybe maybe on this one I should have scripted a little more and had something in front of me. I don't have a teleprompter, but you know something to kind of keep me on track. Uh, but hopefully it won't be too annoying to you. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, be so scattered and 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 get on everybody's nerves. But guys, look, just don't forget. Uh, like I always tell you, I love you. God loves you. And guys, whatever you do, don't give up. Keep pushing. Get after it. Work hard. You put in the time. Put in the effort. Be consistent, and you'll get there. Don't get discouraged. Keep pushing. Guys, I'm out. See you next time. <laughs>